welcome to Wing Design Tutorial 1, Introduction to the Excel Design Tool. The objectives of this tutorial are to understand how spreadsheets are used as interactive design tools, to understand terminology for specifying wing geometry, to implement a structural model using equations, using named variables, to obtain a design solution that meets strength and stiffness requirements, and finally to verify that design solution meets geometric requirements and to iterate to develop an optimal solution. So here we are in our wing design spreadsheet and we've got um, a number of different tabs along the bottom and the general workflow in doing this is we've got a starting page. First page here is the inputs to the design. Then there's a bit of modeling in terms of how we're going to model the load on the wing and how that turns into a bending moment. Then this is the bit where the design happens. We're going to vary the geometry and then look at the stress and deflection of the beam to see if it meets requirements. And then when it does meet requirements, we can then check the geometry fits inside our wing. And at the very end here, uh, when we're satisfied with our design, uh, we can export the geometry of the aerofoil into CAD and then we can use that to, uh, to draw it up properly. Okay, so starting at the beginning, uh, we've got our inputs. So orange cells mean it's a user input. So the orange cells are ones where we need, to, we need to put in values according to the specification or anything else, our design choices. Gray cells are calculations. And the yellow cells in this spreadsheet are where you as a developer have to input the equations uh, based on the information you've been given in your briefing document. So first up, nomenclature of how you talk about a wing, and there are special dimensions on a wing that are universally understood. And the distance between the wing tips is called the span, uh, but it's also useful to talk about a semi-span, and generally the, the, the letter for that is uh, a little s. Uh, the distance in the flow-wise direction is known as the wing chord. And what else we got on here? We've got a spar in the middle, so a spar is generally referred to as a as a, a bit of structure there that you'd have in the wing that takes most of the bending. And we've got an aileron and an inboard flap. So both of these are trailing edge flaps. Um, if it's generally outboard and it's used for roll control, it's called an aileron. Uh, if, it's, if it's inboard, generally they're used for high lift and that would just be called a flap. Uh, the other thing on here, aspect ratio is span divided by chord. So the higher aspect ratio, the more slender the wing. And then lastly, in terms of doing our structural analysis, we're going to be looking at half a wing. So we're going to look, be looking at the semi-span of the wing and we're going to be modeling the load on the wing with a force at the wing tip. And for testing purposes, we, we will need to expend, extend the spar slightly so that we can hold it uh, physically when we're adding loads to it. So that extension is labeled on there. Also on this table, we've got um, material properties. So the ones we're interested in for our material, which is foam board. And here's an example of foam board here, foam in the middle with paper either side. This is backed with um, brown paper. The more normal foam board is backed with normal white paper. So the ultimate tensile strength of a material, UTS, is the maximum stress a material can uh, hold, uh, after which it will plastically deform. Or in the case of foam board, it will um, fail in a way, either by sort of crumpling or tearing. So there's a tensile strength and a compressive strength. So materials like this are different, have different strengths in pulling and pushing. And in this case, actually, foam board is weaker in pushing than it is in pulling. Elastic modulus, um, young, also known as Young's modulus, symbol E, is the stiffness of the material. So uh, in terms of Hooke's law, you've got F equals Kx. And this is the kind of K in the, that equation. So it's the stiffness of the material. And we've also got a shear modulus. So if elastic modulus is kind of pulling and pushing stiffness, shear modulus, shear modulus is the shear stiffness. So as you try and shear the material, um, how stiff it is in that, uh, in that axis. Density, so mass density, uh, kilograms meter cubed. So that's how, the, um, how, how much a meter cubed of the material weighs. So a meter cubed of foam board weighs 58 kilograms. The other thing in terms of engineering constraints is the material we're working with is A1 foam board sheet and that we uh, know from looking at the size of A1 that our sheets are 841 mil wide, uh, 594 in the other dimension and they're 5 mil thick. 
and I guess the important thing for us is the material is 5 mil thick uh, and that's the maximum length it can go to. Okay so going into the work to get this spreadsheet going so some yellow boxes here this is our kind of modeling bit uh, we've taken a wing with an aerodynamic load on and we've made a pretty big assumption but we're assuming that the, the weight is acting in the middle and just because it's easy we're saying half the weight is taken on either, either wing tip and it's being supported on the wing tips. In reality the lift load would average out so that the forces were um, yeah, more like in the middle. Um, by assuming that all the lift load is acting out the tips we're being conservative and this is kind of the, um, a worst case or a case that, that's um, uh, less favourable to the wing than having it inboard so we're kind of being a conservative pessimistic design so that's okay. Uh, this makes the math nice and easy so if we take half a wing and fix it in the middle and we apply that load at the tip there's a bending moment distribution like that and the thing we're interested in is the maximum bending moment at the root of the wing. So what we need to do to get this distribution is we need to know what the point load is and then we need to work out um, how that bending moment changes as we go along the wing. So point load at wing tip, If I this is a yellow cell and this is a cell that you've got to complete in your spreadsheet if you're filling this in and if we look on this diagram here our um, wing tip load is nmg over 2 so n is the number of g's that you're pulling so this is the kind of load factor on the wing m is its mass g is the acceleration due to gravity and then we divide it by two because that overall uh, force is split between two wings so notice that the load the wing is carrying is not just equal to its weight it's equal to its weight times this n this load factor so an aircraft that's accelerating has a load on its wings that's bigger than the weight of the aircraft and if we look in this cell here it's this one's already completed um, but if you notice we're using variable names here so n I'm actually typed in n times m times g divided by 2 so by using variable names in Excel it's a very easy way of tracking things we can look at that equation and say yes it's equal to that if you just type in cell references uh, it's much harder to follow so always good practice in these Excel models to use named variables and what I'm going to do is show you uh, where you can see all of those. So, so if you go to formulas and then click on name manager, a little window opens up and here you can see all the variables in the spreadsheet. So we've got aspect ratio, B for span, chord, Young's modulus and so on, various dimensions, density, shear modulus, so on. So these are variables stored within the spreadsheet and if you want to use them, you just type in the name. So for example, if I want the aspect ratio, if I just do a cell and do equals to A and it actually finds it down the bottom there so I can just click on that one, double click on that and I hit return, it'll tell me what the aspect value of aspect ratio is and so if I go to design inputs we can see here that the aspect ratio is 5 so let's change that to 7 and if I go back to this that cell has changed to 7 um, so that's all nicely linked together. Okay, there's our bending moment distribution. It's linear because the, it's just force times distance as you go along the wing. Uh, fairly simple equation that you need to put in there uh, to generate that. Depending on your familiarity with Excel, don't forget that if you're if you're multiplying by constant number and you're pulling it down, you have to use the dollar signs there. And what that means is, as you, as you go down the the list, um, it will the dollar signed one will stay fixed reference and the other one will move as you drag it down. So that's kind of basic Excel, which I'm sure most people know already. Okay, so let's do some structural design. What's been set up here is a, uh, a spreadsheet that will work out the uh, deflection of the beam and it'll also work out the peak stress at the root and compare it to the allowable stress in that material, so the ultimate tensile strength or ultimate compressive strength and it'll also check a stiffness in terms of a torsional compliance so how much would that wing twist if you applied a torque to it and our job as a designer is to find a wing section um, that gives us uh, keeps us within our stress limit and also keeps with it with this within it, it our torsional compliance limit and no free lunches so as we make the, the wing scar cross section bigger 
it will get stronger and stiffer but the mass will go up so the idea is is we we find the the minimum mass uh, spar design that meets the requirements and that fits within the geometry so let's just have a go so we we've got too much stress in our so it's too small so under the given load it's being um, the, the stress at the top and bottom is too high um, but we know as an engineer the deeper you make the beam the larger the second moment area and that reduces the amount of stress at the top and the bottom so if we get the height of the beam here is at 25 so let's turn that up to 30 so it's still failing let's make it bigger even more you can see on here our structural reserve factor this is the ratio of the stress in the beam to the um, maximum stress it's allowed so the stress in the beam is sort of nearly three times as much um, as as can be withstood by the material so we're a way off still so what I'm going to do is make it a bit thicker as well so that's the height top and bottom thickness let's turn that to 10 okay it's getting slightly better but we're still a way out that to 50. Okay, so it's now only one factor of 1.5 out. Put a bit more in. 0.29, make it a bit thicker. Getting close. Okay, bingo, we've done it. We've got it. This beam shape here now. Uh, our structural reserve factor is 0.94, which means that the stress is only 94% of its maximum stress. So this is a pass and we can see the beam, the tip deflection under this loading case is 30 millimetres. So if our spar is about 70 cent 0.7 metres long, it's deflecting uh, 30 millimetres. Um, we're still failing on the torsional compliance, so we're okay on bending, um, but it's failing on torsion. And the key thing with torsion, it's about the enclosed area of your beam that matters. So what we need to do is make the beam wider so that we can enclose more area in it. So I'm going to make it uh, thicker by increasing this. That's getting better. Let's go to 35. Okay, just past there. So now this beam is able to take the bending and the torsion. So if you remember the total mass of the beam started off at around 16 grams. Uh, it's now gone up to 65 grams. So factor of uh, five or so uh, bigger um, in order to meet the requirements so no free lunches we've made our beam stronger but it's got heavier uh, and the goal in engineering is to make something that's just strong enough so it's at the minimum mass okay so far so good but does it fit into our wing so what we need to do is go to check geometry and here's our wing section and here's our spar um, so it's looking rather big, we can move it around, so if we're moving the Y value, whatever we do with it, um, it's not fitting in, we can move it across that way a bit. Um, so it's strong enough, but it sits out the, the side of the wing, and for, for wings and everything else, the shape is, the wetted surface is sacred, so we have to um, stay within that, so we can't do that. So let's go back to this, so we have to reduce the height. Let's put it down to 50 and let's make it wider. Let's just try making it a box. Okay, that's probably more than I needed to, so let's do 40. Okay, both those pass. It's looking a bit chunky. Let's see if I can reduce the top thickness there. It's failed on that. Make that a bit wider. So, this is the kind of art of design. I'm just trying different things. So these just passed. So it's a little bit over designed now in the sense that it's only points 0.7 and 0.7. We've got 30%. It's 30% heavier than it needs to be. But if we now check here, we can see ooh, didn't quite fit. So let's go back again and change that to 45. Okay, we're just squeezing in. There we go, just fits. And if we push it up a little bit, move it across just about fits. Um, one thing you'll notice is that the this bottom bit of the wing, since it's this shape, um, is sort of angled slightly. But what we can do is actually if we rotate the, the wing um, shape. So what I'm doing there is just rotating the wing geometry slightly. 
and that means that we can make it sort of flat on the bottom and fit it in. Okay, a bit of finessing going on there, but we can choose where our wing spar wants to be. Bear in mind the thickest part of a, this is a NACA um, 4418 aerofoil, and the thickest part of the aerofoil is at 30%, so actually I've moved this across to 30%. The lift loads tend to act at 25%, but because we're structural engineers, we want to put the spar in the thickest place. Okay, so um, having done that, we've checked, we've met those requirements. It's not quite the minimum mass because these things could be closer. There's also some other requirements you need to look at in terms of the wingtip deflection under a load factor of one. So if we went back here, this is a load factor of two. Um, uh, but you also need to check that under normal sort of 1G flight, there's a load factor you need to put in. Uh, and bear in mind, these values here are not the values you'll be using for your particular design. Geometry is good. Okay, and then the very last thing we need to do um, before the next stage of the project is that uh, with this wing shape, if we're going to draw this wing up in SolidWorks, we need to get the geometry out. So this is the thing scaled to a, to a chord of one. This is scaled to the uh, according to the values you've put in your initial design table. Um, but to get these in SolidWorks, uh, we need to export them. So the last tab on here is those um, X, Y values pasted in here with a with zeros there and, and we'll see in the next stage what you do is you take these values and then you can import them into SOLIDWORKS. Okay, so that wraps up this brief tutorial on how to use the Excel Design Spreadsheet. So we've seen there's a flow of information that goes from your design inputs, a bit of modelling, a um, bit of design, a bit of checking everything fits, uh, going back redesigning it, checking it fits and so on, checking it passes all the time, trying to minimize the mass of the thing you're designing. And lastly, exporting this geometry so you can draw it up in SOLIDWORKS.